What's the best way to know more about someone? Just look through their bills. Spending patterns tell us a lot about people, what they prioritize, what they ignore, and what they value. So tonight, we're looking at India's bills. Where did Indian households spend their money? The answer lies in the Household Consumption Expenditure Survey. It is prepared by the Ministry of Statistics. The latest one covers 2022 and 2023, and it has five major takeaways. Number one, rural India is now consuming a lot more. In 2011, the average monthly rural consumption was around 1,400 rupees. Now it is more than 3,700 rupees, from 1,400 to 3,700. That's a 164% rise. In fact, rural India outperformed urban India. Here in cities, consumption increased by 146%. So that, that's good news overall. Takeaway number two, Indians are spending less on food. Again, let's look at the numbers. In 2011, food made up almost 53% of rural spending. If you go back to 1999, it was almost 60% of the spending. But the latest figure is 46%. So less than half of rural spending is on food. Same in urban India. Cities used to spend 48% of their income on food. Now they spend just 39% on it. I guess the question is why? Because that's how the human mind and economics work. Indians now earn more than before, and when income rises, you spend a lesser share of it on food. You diversify your purchases. You start buying other things, maybe a bit of luxury, maybe some gadgets, maybe some experiences like travel. Now, this trend was deduced back in the 19th century, but as data shows, it is still relevant. And just to be clear, this does not mean that Indians are eating less. It means they're earning more, and from their overall income, a smaller share is being spent on food. Which brings us to takeaway number three. What is India eating? Again, we see a major shift. For a long time, the Indian diet was based on cereals and pulses, basically food grades. Just look at the data from 2011. Almost 26% of rural food spending was on food grains. What does that mean? Assume that your food expenditure per month is 100 rupees. You spend 100 rupees every month on food. Then out of this, 26 rupees was used to buy food grains, cereals and pulses, more than a quarter. But now that share is down to 15%. Again, the question is why? Because rural Indians are now buying other things. The share of milk is 18%, fruits is 8%, animal protein is 11%, and processed food is 20%. Same in urban India. Four categories make up 65% of food spending in Indian cities, milk, animal protein, fruits, and processed food. Now, this shows a clear change in consumer behavior. The average Indian is buying new things. They're buying more fruit, more animal protein, and a lot of processed items. It's a sign of increasing income. It's also a good sign for nutritional standards because fruits and vegetables have important nutrients. Meat and eggs have protein. So the end result is a balanced diet, but I must say here, the processed food bit is slightly worrying. You do not want to be spending too much on sugary drinks and colas. Now, takeaway number four, more discretionary spending. We briefly touched upon this. Indians are spending more on durable goods, things like televisions and refrigerators. This is true in rural and urban India. Rural India spending on durables was just 2.6% in 1999. It has now risen to 6.9%. In urban India, it has risen from 3.6% to 7%. Again, this has knock-on effects, this kind of change in spending patterns. A fridge preserves your food for longer periods. A washing machine cuts down your chores. A computer speeds up your work. So these durables are making our lives easier. They're making us more productive. I know all of this sounds great, but takeaway number five is a downer. Yes, things are improving. But inequality persists. The poorest 5% in rural India spend just 46 rupees per day, the bottom 5%. In urban India, the poorest 5% are spending 67 rupees per day. Compare this to the top 5%. They spend 350 rupees per day in rural areas and 700 rupees per day in urban areas. Now look at this gap. Bridging this gap will be a big challenge which is why this survey is so important, because any economic policy needs data. Data gives you direction, data gives you ideas, and data eventually also delivers results if used properly. That's where such surveys come in. This one is released every five years. 
But the one in 2017-18 was not released. It followed the introduction of GST and demonetization. So the government said the data quality was an issue. So the last survey we have on this is from 2011-12, more than a decade ago. Safe to say India has changed a lot since then. The next government will have to formulate policies based on this data. It shows that the Indian consumer is eager. Her spending patterns have changed. The key is to build on that and more importantly, to reduce the inequalities.